good evening and radha can we start now good evening sir yes yeah, good evening uh, can we start now uh sir five more minutes sir if anyone is joining i'll just check with the uh, gha people sumana can we start it now or we are waiting for someone yeah doctor uh five more minutes uh people are joining on the platform
Hello. Hello everyone. Seven ten. We'll start. Yes, we'll start, sir. We'll start. How many students have joined? Sumana? Uh, sir, one minute, sir. We'll get. Sumana, can you please share the details? Sumana, can we start? Yes, yes, ma'am. You can start. So, a very good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, keeping some time off your busy schedules to attend the meeting. So, on behalf of, of Global Health Care Academy, I'm extending my warm welcome to all the faculty as well as the participants. So a few words about uh, Global Healthcare Academy. It has been instituted by the mission to develop competent and compassionate human resources for the healthcare sector. Global Healthcare Academy also promotes innovative solutions and enterprises in healthcare. Our core purpose is to bridge the skill and knowledge gap between formal education and needs for the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the session proper, the first session will be a welcome to SBRT course and need of the hour by Professor Ramesh S. Bilimaga. Professor Ramesh S. Bilimaga is the president-elect of Indian Society of Oncology and former president of Association of Radiation Oncology of India and former vice president of Federation of Asian Radiation Oncologies. Sir has 40 years of experience in the field of radiation oncology and his key areas of interest being in highly conformal radiation techniques such as IGRT, IMRT, and SPRT. Sir is a certified cyber knife trained specialist and also known for introducing hypothermia along with external radiation. He has over 43 publications in both national and international journals. Sir was on the editorial board of the International uh, Indian Journal of Cancer Research and Journal of Contemporary Brachytherapy and has contributed to chapters in breast and lung monograms. Sir is a fellow at International College of Surgeons and has been awarded the Dr. B.C. Roy Award from Inter uh, Indian Medical Association, Karnataka State Branch, and has been or an orator on many occasions at various national and international professional organizations. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Andretta. Welcome. 
Welcome to today's webinar. Can you hear me? And are they... Sir, yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome to you know, today's uh, webinar. I know, as Andrada has put it, GHA is uh, making a stride and you know, to you know, in, in inculcate the, the facility for uh, for teaching and training. And we, I know that you know, all of us are, you know, they graduated, and then become you know, then a master in uh, in radiotherapy, and some of us are you know ma must have gone through with the cobalt treatment and also the linear accelerator and various missions, and uh, everybody is in some stage or the other in their career. But it's uh, so important and for us to upgrade our uh, skills and knowledge and in the today's context because world is moving very fast. Uh, just to understand that, uh, you know, is there a, uh, such an important their need and the magnitude of the, the demand and for this specialty of SBRT to grow, uh, let's look at the uh, kind of a statistics that we have today in the facilities that we have in radiotherapy in India. No, we have about uh, no, no 450 odd no institutions and in which are catering to the radiation uh, requirement in our country, and actual need is almost uh, four times. So, and even taking this to be granted, and in the institutions that we have 550, and uh, we have uh, linear accelerator you now ranging almost to 600, and uh, and a telecobalt of about 160. And these instruments has to be handled uh, certainly, and uh, how are they doing it? And uh, taking uh, to be granted that uh, India has uh, about 8 to 10 lakh new cases of cancer, and 60% of them are come to radiation at one stage or the other. And every day, and we treat around 40 to 45,000 fractions you know, per day and in, you know, in our uh, 600 odd missions that we have. So, and if you further look at it interestingly to all of you know, the listeners, and uh, we have a 2D RT and a 3D CRT, IMRT, IGRT, and uh, several other modes of art therapies and SBRT and yes, you know, SRS. And uh, most of it you know, today, and uh, still the 3D CRT is uh, quite popular and it's, uh, it's well in use, and uh, whereas the 2D CRT you know, is, uh, you know, waning away. And IMRT, we have uh, no, about 10,000 IMRTs are being treated. And IGRT uh, comes to about 2,000 to 3,000 fractures per day. And you know, equally, number is the arc therapy. Because SBRT is uh, starting from about five, 500 fractures you know, per day in India. Now it has gone up to 1,000 and within a matter of two years. That only shows how the SBRT and SRS is uh, really catching up and the need of the hour is every one of us need to be skill up, uh, skill ourselves up and you know, to deliver a rate and you know, appropriate the SBRT system. I know there are various uh, organizations and institutions and hospitals are catering to this. In India, we, we do need and more and more you know, institutions to do that. One such is a GHA, which has come out and is a second edition of that. And uh, we have uh, well-trained you know, faculty and to undertake this uh, task. And the first one we have had and very successfully. And I wish all of our, uh, no, the trainees that were intending to participate to know the magnitude of the requirement of SBRT in our country and to give accurate treatment and learning is nothing, nothing like it and that to hands on. And for which you know, our, uh, no, the faculty are well trying to impart that knowledge. And I welcome all of you to this uh, great session and uh, uh, be free to interact with our faculty and learn as, as many as possible and the questions and the techniques that you know, one can be learned. Uh, thank you very much, Anu, and for Sridhar and the team and Radha and Yeche and, uh, and Shiva so Address and I was supposed to do the, the last you know, the word of thanks, but I requested him to change what because I had some other uh, work at 7 30. Uh, thank you so much. And once again, I welcome and uh, leave to Andra to continue the session. Vote, Andra.
thank you very much sir for such uh, in, uh, introduction and your kind words and highlighting the need of the r for sbrt course so let's move on to the next presentation by dr uh, professor manoj s gupta regarding the radiobiological basis of srs sbrt professor manoj gupta is currently serving as dean and professor of and head and head of the department of uh, radiation oncology at aims dishikesh and is the president elect of indian association of radiation oncology over to you sir Uh, thank you, Anuradha, and uh, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate the whole team of uh, Global Health Academy for successfully conducting the first course last year. And uh, I am pretty sure that all the participants who have attended the course last year uh, must be practicing uh, stereotactic video surgery and stereotactic. Active body radiotherapy at their respective centers with more clarity and more understanding. So uh, I am really thankful to the uh, team of Global Health Academy for having given me this opportunity uh, to be associated with uh, uh, with with, the, with this team. And uh, my uh, job is to. Uh, discuss the nuances of uh, radiobiological basis or behind uh, stereotactic radio surgery and stereotactic radiotherapy. So, what basically I am going to cover uh, during this course in my presentation, with I would like to give a glimpse of that to the participants. So, let me share my uh, screen, and uh, this is just a very short presentation. So, uh, my, my, uh, my presentation uh, is uh, visible, uh, Anuradha? Uh, no, sir. Slides are not visible, sir. Not visible. So I just share my screen. Yes, sir. Visible. Is it uh, visible now? Yes, sir. Slides are visible now, sir. So, so I am just going to tell you about what I am going to cover uh, uh, during my presentation in this course. Uh, primarily, as I told you, that I will just discuss and uh, you know explain about the various very biological principles uh, behind using. Uh, such a high dose of radiation delivered either in a single fraction or maybe a few fraction which may range from two to five. Because uh, uh, as a student of radiation oncology and as a, as a practicing radiation oncologist, uh, we have been taught uh, that uh, fractionation is the key for having a successful radiotherapy outcome. And uh, we have been using fractionated radiotherapy uh, for last almost a uh, century. Uh, for last uh, uh, more than two decades, uh, we shifted uh, you know, some of the sites to be treated by uh, a technique which is known as stereotactic radio surgery, where we deliver the whole dose of radiation just in a single go. So what are the basically the scientific basis? Uh, to use, uh, you know, the technique of SRS and SBRT. This is what I will discuss, you know, during my presentation. And I love to call this kind of radiation delivery as non-fractionated radiotherapy, as we know that the delivery uh, of radiation is in just a single fraction or in few number of fraction. And uh, I always uh, discuss with my uh, basic concepts of radiobiology and most basic thing in radiobiology is cell survival curve. So I will discuss uh, about the cell survival curve. And there have been many models which have been put forward to explain the mammalian cell survival curve. But uh, for radiation oncologists, most important is linear quadratic model. And this is what I will discuss in detail during my presentation. Another important uh, you know, uh, aspect of uh, linear quadratic uh, model is alpha-beta ratio, which uh, 
as a radiation oncologist we use in our day-to-day -day practice. So we need to understand about ag what exactly we mean by alpha-beta ratio and what is the clinical significance of this alpha-beta ratio uh, during our day-to-day uh, -day practice. Uh, we know that uh, the alpha-beta ratio is different for different type of tissue, especially uh, normal tissue is categorized into two categories, early reacting and late reacting tissue. So we need to understand that why we have uh, different alpha-beta ratio and the shape of cell survival for early reacting and late reacting tissue. Uh, we also know that malignant tissue behaves like, uh, like, like a early reacting tissue. So naturally, they have similar alpha-beta ratio like uh, early reacting tissue. And this difference in uh, malignant tissue alpha-beta ratio and late normal tissue alpha-beta ratio have an impact in uh, getting a therapeutic advantage. So that is all which will be discussed in my presentation. Uh, we also know that when we increase the dose uh, per fraction, which we deliver, for example, in hypofractionated uh, regime, we use higher than the conventional dose, which is 180 centigrade to 200 centigrade. So when we use more than this uh, uh, dose range, it result into more damage to late reacting tissue as compared to tumor or early reacting tissue. So uh, when we know that, then why late radiation injury, uh, you know, we, we need to understand why this uh, happened. And uh, uh, if it is the uh, principle, then why not we see a higher late side effect in SRS and SBRT where we give very high dose of radiation. So these all concepts will be covered in my presentation. We all know that tumor is always surrounded by normal tissue. And as I just mentioned that when you increase the dose per fraction, it causes more damage for normal surrounding tissue, especially for late effect. So how we overcome this problem in SRS and SDRT, uh, which basically related to a concept which is known as that share. So what is the concept of red share? This is all again will be discussed in my presentation and how this concept we use to reduce the least damages in normal tissue. So that again will be very interesting uh, presentation. Then uh, as a radiation oncologist, we know that four hours of radiobiology play a very important role in fractionation. And these four hours are reoxygenation, redistribution, repair, of sublethal damage and repopulation. And because of these four hours, we get a therapeutic gain. So we'll discuss that what is the relevance of these four hours in non-fractionated radiotherapy, which we deliver in SRS and SBRT. So again, this is quite interesting and we will find out the relevance of these four hours in present day scenario, especially in SRS and SBRT. Uh, for example, reoxygenation, we know that in fractionation, uh, what happens that uh, uh, aerobic uh, cells are, uh, you know, uh, uh, the preferably killed by radiation. And as a result, uh, you get uh, hypoxic uh, cells uh, left. But by the time you deliver next dose of radiation next day, some of the cells uh, migrate from hypoxic compartment to oxic compartment and become sensitive. So this process continue in fractionated radiotherapy and this is known as reoxygenation. But in non-fractionated radiotherapy as used in SRS and SBRT, how we overcome this problem of hypoxia when there's no opportunity for reoxygenation. So this again, to get the answer of uh, this uh, question, uh, I think participants will have to uh, wait for my detailed presentation during this course. Similarly, sublethal damage repair, we know that when we give single fraction radiotherapy, the cells are most sensitive to radiation. And as you add the fraction, we observe two important changes. And these changes are that uh, uh, with addition of uh, each fraction, the shoulder is reappearing and the curves get shallower. And this shallowness reflects the less sensitivity of the cell line to the radiation, 
which means that to get the same clinical endpoint or to reduce the survival fraction to the same point, you have to deliver increasing dose of radiation because now cell become less sensitive uh, as we add more number of fractions. And this is mainly because of repair of the sublethal damage. So what is the role of sublethal damage in SRS and SBRT? This again will be covered uh, in my presentation. Now we know that fractionation is a strong tool for therapeutic gain and how just to explain here, we know that for tumor, the, uh, the cell survival curve has a less curvy shoulder and they have less repair capacity while the normal tissue, especially the late reacting tissue, when, we, uh, when I call, when I say normal tissue, I mean late reacting tissue, the shoulder is more curvy and they have large repair capacity while the terminal portion, which is a straight portion of the cell survival curve, is similar in both type of tissue. That means tumor as well as late reacting tissue. So it's, it is a straight line. So when you give fractionated radiotherapy, you naturally uh, deliver around 200 centigrade per fraction. So if you just go to this range of dose, that is 200 centigrade per fraction, and when you give every day 200 centigrade, what will happen that shoulder will reappear and this will be true for tumor as well as for late reacting tissue and curves get shallower, which means that uh, the fractionation will is because shallowness reflects less sensitivity of the cell line to the radiation. So, uh, so, so, so the point is that with fractionation, uh, uh, both the uh, target tissue will be spared. It means tumor will be spared, but and the late reacting tissue will also be spared. But if you look at the magnitude of this uh, spare, uh, it will be different for two types of tissue. And if you compare with the single fraction, you will appreciate that magnitude of sparing the late reacting tissue is much more as compared to the tumor. And this ultimately provides you the therapeutic advantage. But how we get this therapeutic gain in SRS and SBRT where we are not using fractionation. We are just giving single fraction RT. That is again quite interesting, which will be covered in my presentation. Similarly, redistribution, we know that G2M is more sensitive, late S is most resistant. And during fractionation, the cells in the most resistant phase move to the sensitive phase. But in SBRT and SRS, there is no opportunity for these cells which are present in resistant phase to move to the sensitive phase. So there is no opportunity. So how this issue is sorted out in SRS and SBRT, again, this will be covered in my presentation. So if you look at the survival curve at high dose, when you are, which is used in SRS and SBRT, what happens actually? So this is the cell survival curve for conventional fractionation, right? So it is the shape of the cell survival curve. Now it has been observed that when you use high dose of radiation, the shape changes. In actually, initially shape does not change. And just to make uh, the point more clear, if you just concentrate on this dose level, that is 15 gray, and uh, uh, this is the cell survival curve, uh, which uh, is, uh, which may be used for conventional fractionation. So what happens that if you give 15 gray, it will reduce the survival fraction to this point, and this ultimately uh, survival fraction will translate to a tumor control probability of 50%. But when you use high dose, which is used in SRS and SBRT, it was observed that now the shape of the cell survival curve changes. Initial portion does not change, but naturally terminal portion gets much steeper, which means that 15 gray will reduce the survival fraction to a point which is much lower, and this will result into a tumor control probability of 80%, which indicate that probably some new radiobiological phenomena also get activated uh, when you use a very high dose of radiation. And this phenom these uh, new radiobiological phenomena they also contribute in cell kill. So that is why you get much more cell kill as calculated just from linear quadratic model. So this is again, we will see uh, during my presentation. And of course we know that new biological, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, activity which get triggered at high dose are vascular damage and stem cell death. I will discuss in detail in my presentation. For intracranial SRS, we, uh, I just give you an example of meningioma. We know that meningioma basically uh, late reacting abnormal cells embedded or surrounded by late reacting normal cells. Since both are late reacting tissues, so they have similar alpha beta ratio. Then the question is that how we get a therapeutic advantage when both have similar alpha beta ratio, because if we deliver high dose of radiation as used in SRS and SBRT, it will no doubt damage the, uh, the, the, the meningioma cells uh, much more, but same will be true to the surrounding normal tissue because they have the same alpha beta ratio. So how we get the therapeutic advantage in this situation that, is, that will also be discussed during my presentation. So all the so 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 participants, all the answers of these uh, questions you will see during my detailed presentation uh, when when the course will start. So thank you very much, and I once again uh, thanks the organizer for having given me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful and detailed presentation about radiologic basis of SBRT. Let's move on to the next presentation. Overview and uh, insight to SRS SBRT course by Dr. Sridhar Piyas. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Dr. Sridhar Piyas, Senior Consultant Radiation Oncologist at HCG Hospitals, Bangalore, former President of Aroy Karnataka Chapter, Secretary of Indian uh, Neurologic Oncology uh, Society. Head of CyberKnife and Head of Clinical uh, Services International at HCG in uh, Bangalore. Sir has completed his post-graduation and DNB in radiotherapy from a prestigious institute. He specialized in whole body stereotactic robotic radiosurgery and has a vast experience in neurologic and extracranial tumors, functional radiosurgery with over 5,000 cases to his credit. He has been trained in whole body stereotactic radiosurgery in Stanford University. Sir has vast experience in imaging and oncology, High precision radiotherapy like 3D CRT, IMRT, IGRT, SRS, SBRT, tomotherapy, and immunoradiotherapy. He's currently the. Uh, so over to you, sir. Thank you, Anu, for the nice introduction. Uh, at the outset, yeah, I'll just let me share the screen. Okay. Let's see the slide. Okay. Slide show is done. So I wanted to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. So uh, at the outset, I really thanks all the participants who are there, more than 300 people who are there online right now. And uh, uh, it's definitely, that shows that how SBRT is evolving and how SBRT is important for the need of the hour as our, uh, both the previous speakers have stored. So um, the, the educational things and learning things is definitely continuous. And coming to the SPRT course, this is the second things, what second course, what second batch, what we are doing. And the enthusiasm among the radiation oncologists, the, uh, including the students, is showing that how important is the one uh, wants to uh, like learn SPRT and take it into practice. So 15, 20 minutes, probably around uh, 20 minutes, I'll be talking about overview, insight, and SPRT course.
So as I told you that the more than 300 people who are logged in online, that shows that like why it is one, because we are aware. If you see any of the guidelines and each days and many of the tumors, so we see that it has become, SPRT has become the integral component of guidelines of all the many of the cancers. It may be astro, estro, and NCCN, or like uh, or even uh, in astro, uh, like in ROI and NCI, NCG. So we are seeing that that the incorporation of SBRT as a part of the treatment in these cancers. So you are in the right directions. I really thank you guys that like you have taken out time and then you are thinking that what should be the uh, learning points to look for the SPRT and what is make this SPRT course interesting along with the GHA. Let's see. So we are done. Uh, if I compare the SBRT versus conventional RT, how it is different from that, like it is, we are already in the era of high precision radiotherapy. You are evolving from IMRT, IGRT. We have the equipments at, in the hospital uh, uh, with, with us, and we want to kickstart that SPRT where we are looking for, we have all the equipments with the attachments where uh, the infrastructures, but we have the patients, but we are not uh, started yet. So those are the people who are definitely has to look for these things. So we are aware that the integration of modern imaging simulation and treatment planning and delivery techniques has made us to, to a different level as a radiation oncologist. And there's a, we are, the SBRT is a shorter duration of fractions, more number of beams are used like the, in terms of integration of the planning systems. And we have focused this especially for a particular point, the, our targets, that is where we are looking at to the, uh, looking for high precisions. The frequent use of non-coplanar beams, which is not in the conventional radiations, that is what SBRT makes it possible, all the permutation and combinations of non-coplanar beams. So it makes it a very, very important integral part of it. So because it has a small penumbra and the no beam margins for the penumbra, so we can give it a very, very precise treatment, precise, uh, uh, technically we can deliver uh, better radiations compared to the uh, conventional one. So use of inhomogeneous dose distributions. So I always remember as a student, like when we say homogeneous distribution is our main thing at the target, uh, the delivering to the targets. But definitely I would like that inhomogeneity of inhomogeneous dis dose distribution should be utilized as our tool to, to increase our dose to the targets. And of course, like do the uh, modification of these techniques in IMRT. And we need to save the uh, organs at risk. So it has a radiobiological, uh, uh, radiobiology as all, as, uh, um, uh, like it is an important component to, to understand versus SPRT, SRS versus the conventional one. So we have always uh, like given respect to the uh, four hours, five hours of radiobiology. So uh, Professor Manoj Gupta is already a part of the faculty who is, we can say that radiobiology in India is definitely, is, is the main persons behind that. And he is going to take care of radiobiology classes to, to understand SPRT and SRS. So traditionally, we have followed those um, you know, four and five hours. Now we know that it's not only the double standard break, what we are looking at, there is the lethal damage and some lethal aspects of the damages are doubled in case of SBRT when we're given. Not only the tumor cells, the tumor compartment and the tumor environments are taken care into uh, in terms of uh, SBRT with high doses. So ablation and direct endothelial apoptosis, and not only we are limited to that, now we are not only, local treatment is not the one what we are looking at, systemic effect of the local treatment in the form of uh, abscophal effect and immunomodulations, that is where we are looking at in, in uh, coming years. And SBRT, we are already there. So we need to explore that aspect of uh, SBRT and start doing it, and definitely it is more beneficial. So organs at risk prevented from the serious damage, the thanks to our technology, so we can definitely give very, very precise uh, uh, radiation dose and 
the what we see is a 50% 30% doses and the 95 95 98% full doses the dose for this so steep there is definitely the organ set risk uh, can be saved very well so these are some of the things what we are going to learn in is that because how to do that is very very important so where is brt that was a and the when we start when we started we know that like the sbrt came srs sbrt came it is not a new tool as such actually srs sbrt we are doing for the years in the gamma knife and the, for the intracranial so primary disease the selection of the cases is important primary diseases starting from brain top to bottom primary where diseases can be considered to give an example starting from the benign tumors in the intracranial single metastasis like the uh, the some of the There a problem? We are not able to hear. Sir, sir, it has a, some internet issue, sir. So one minute, sir, we'll be back. Okay, okay, no problem. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, I did it. I need it. Maybe can you put on me from there? But the internet is not so much. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. So oligometastasis, I was talking about oligometastasis. It has definitely, uh, the role of SBRT is 
revolutionized the whole of, of oligometastatic setup and in com and the it's delaying so now re sbrt re radiation setting where we thought no treatment can be done for this some of the particular cases especially re radiation spinal tumors brain tumors and pancreas epitobiliary we can definitely go ahead and treat these cases with the help of sbr No. Just two minutes, the sir is logging in back again. Sorry for the inconvenience. Some network issues happening.
Hi, hello. Sorry for the internet issue. Um, let me go back to the slides. The sender to the email for no? I'll, what it does, I'll start talking from the system. You can uh, model the slides. Just here, here, doing that. That's the house. Nice. Who's who's uh, doing that? Go back to that. Sumana, who is sharing the slides? Sorry, Doctor. Sumana, I have sent the mail to Vignesh. Can you please open the PPT from your side and start sharing? Sir will present from his mobile. Yeah, I will do it. I will do it. One second. Yeah, I have sent it to Vignesh uh, mail ID for GHO online. Vignesh, you can just check out. Uh, I've sent it an email. Just open from there. So they are doing it, sir. Just a minute. So till that time, actually, uh, the critical issues of yes, SBI, what keep we talking. see is we are what we always face in the clinical practice is correct case selection and appropriate contouring. The correct correct case selection is one of the important things. We always see, okay, is this patient is going to be a SBRT? If you have gone through the books and by book this the the, the, the definitions things may be different. But when you're in a clinical thing, you can always see this. If you start thinking, all thinking has to change and start thinking, is this patient is ineligible for uh, SBRT? So according to the correct like current guidelines. So those are the things we're going to teach in and learn from this uh, SBRT course. Appropriate contouring. So was the radiological investigations and the pet city based uh, and the mri based investigations will definitely help you in terms of contouring and we need to follow the contouring guidelines look for what is the uh, surrounding structures how to how much to include is there any margins to be given or no margins depending on your uh, the the technique of uh, sbrt what you are going to use those fractionation is another challenge. Hello. You share my slide.
those uh, selections is another biggest challenge in case of SBRT is single fractions, three fractions, five fractions, two fractions, up to six fractions. So what all this, how we are going to, to select the doses and what is the volume of what you are going to, to uh, take into considerations to, to select those particular cases. So OR constraints is another one. Dose per fraction is another important thing what you're going to learn in this SPRT course. And motion management, of course, what we are looking at in SBRT is effective motion management. That is, if you want to be successful in good SBRT, you should have a robust motion management system in uh, in place uh, for especially for lung tumors, hepatobiliary tumors, and prostate, and so on. Once we do the SBRT, this patient has to be followed up. That diligent follow up is important because the short term and the long term complications. For the tumor, the tumor site are like necrosis and other normal structures. What we are looking at is also important. Can you share my slide? Sir, one minute, sir. Please continue presenting. Yeah. They wanted me to share on WhatsApp. Okay. I'll just share it. So and the other salient features of SPRT, the best thing about SPRT is actually like any other radiation is, is, a, is a OPD procedure, simple procedure. But the time taken for each uh, SPRT treatment is ranges from 20 minutes, maybe around 5 to 10 minutes to, to 60 minutes, depending on the, the machine, what you are using. Usually it may be one to two weeks within uh, like seven days to, to 10 days or 12 days, depending on the uh, type of tumor, what you are treating. Either you are treating as continuously or uh, alternate days. Those are all uh, makes it like one to two weeks is the maximum period what we are looking for the patient. You don't have to worry about six weeks of radiation. It's a totally non-invasive procedure, no anesthesia or minimal sedation, if at all, if it is required, especially in the pediatric oncology, pediatric SBRTs, I do give some uh, under, under sedation or uh, uh, anesthesia, and majority of that, no anesthesia is required. That is one of the things. In the, on the contrary, if the patient is having severe pain, we have done patients under anesthesia so that once SBRT is given, you can see a man like, a phenomenal response where in the second day the patient can lie down without the pain. So, and good quality of life. Quality of life is one of the things what we are looking as a bottom line in any of the cancer management with effective treatment, with the least side effects, probably the discourse or any other radiation treatments. So coming to the insight of the uh, SBRT course, who should attend? The, this is always, uh, uh, I always tell our colleagues, you should have a team. You should have a team of uh, doctors, like the radiation oncologist and the physicist and the radiation technologist. Sumana, other one. And the other one, insight, not that. Other presentation. So one minute, sir. If you can make a team, because the SBRT is definitely a, a complicated procedure where whole teamwork is comes to the play radiation oncologist aided by and the physicist you should have an infrastructure for that the good physicist and the radiation technologist who is ready to work with you and understand that intricacies of sbrt so i always tell that if you make a team and come and uh, attend this course it becomes easy because like it's it's a chain it's a you have to have a robust chain to, to hold on because the Persist planning, understanding is important. Technology's delivery of the technique is very important. 
as a radiation oncologist, you need to, to work with all these two, all the as a teamwork. Otherwise, SPRT won't work. So, if in our place, we always say that there is each one gives their input to, to uh, make it a, a successful uh, program because the physicist will say that, okay, I can plan or I don't plan. So, uh, Dr. Pichandi is in the thing. We always have the argument why we cannot do it, why, why we have to do this. We should not risk, take risk. All those things, our technologists say that, sir, there is technically, although you are planned, it's very difficult to, to implement. So you need to be very, very careful about that, like it's in making that whole team and careful about that execution of the treatment. Each person is important. So I definitely prefer to, to make as a team and uh, attend the course that it becomes easy for everyone. What is the aim of the course? This course aims mainly at like we'll be touching upon history of SBRT and SRS. Definitely it is important. So I'm gonna go to the next, 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 yes. So the radiobiology and hyperfractionation and the consequences, we are going to learn more about that in make a deep dive. Practices of SRS and SPRT across various missions. This is what it is, uh, what we are looking at. See, I have practices in both LINAC, uh, like uh, on CyberKnife and the LINAC based, so electro uh, missions. And if you, you may have a variant missions or any of the missions, what you have, we can definitely consider for SBRT. And we have a team of doc, team of faculty who worked in different missions across the different missions. That makes it may more easy to, to, to understand each mission's parameters which is possible and not possible. Even our physicists and technologists have worked in across all the LINAC platforms. So we are going to learn and among uh, all the missions. Workflow of SBRT, that is important. So what should be your protocol of imaging, target delineation, motion compensation, treatment planning, treatment delivery, and treatment evaluation across various missions will do it. We'll also come to know that what all the plus and minuses where uh, you can uh, do in newer machines are not able to do in the at this particular one. So we're going to learn in detail uh, in different uh, uh, the tumor sites. Next one. Next slide. So no, no. One course back. One, yeah. Or you have available treatment planning and delivery technologies. How to integrate these in clinical practice for SBRT? So compare available technologies and help define applicability for particular use. So we can work with collaborations to, to say that, okay, we can do with this much. If it is not possible, can we work with collaborations? That is another thing what we are looking at for the benefit of the patient. Give an evidence-based review on potential indications for SPRT in various sites for early, locally for early tumors, locally advanced metastatic oligometastasis, radio immunotherapy radiation, as I already told you. Given overview of normal tissue toxicity, tolerability, and radiological uh, changes in SBRT, this is a very in thing to find out about what is, how can we predict, predictive models, can we uh, avoid uh, any of the complications, and radiomics coming into the picture, it gives a more uh, uh, things to, to predict these, thing, uh, these uh, parameters. Teach how to establish and implement a safe and clinical program for SPRT. That is the bottom line. And not just to, to go and burn your fingers. And with the help of the faculties, you can interact at any time with the physicists, technologists, and the faculties to make sure that it is a, a safe and clinical practice. Next one. So what is the course, course view you? learning objectives? By the end of this course, what you are going to do is build a team to implement and practices SRS, SRT, and SPRT. Understand the technical and physical requirements for SRS, SPRTs. Know the clinical rationale of SRS and SPRT program and their limitations. Understand the radiobiological basis of very high fractionations. Simple examples, I started with five, five gray per fractions. Now I go up to eight to 10 gray per fractions. 
and usually for three to five fractions. I'm a follower of five fractions, but we are seeing our colleagues, like even in we have experimented from 20 gray single fractions to 25 to 30 gray, 25 to 28 gray single fractions versus six fractions. So there is a variation in the fractionation size of uh, uh, whatever the fractionation size you are comfortable, we can use it on the radiological base, radiobiological basis. So NSCLC is another thing, another main tumors what we are looking at from the primary to the lymph nodes or re-radiation or oligometastasis. We, we wanted to work extensively in this. Some of the particular tumors we can pick it up and start working on that with our collaboration to make yourself as an expert in that field. So know the current clinical evidence of SRS, SRT, and SPRT in various clinical indications. Next slide. So what is that? Uh, what we are planned, what we have made is the six modules. So to touch up all the modules. So module one is basic module plus physics and imaging that is important. Each session is around 90 minutes, three sessions of each. And module two, immunoright, genomics and radiomyl, radiomics, immuno, immunotherapy and radiotherapy as a separate one. We're going to talk about that, where all we need to use, what all the uh, case of radiation, radiomics data, can we work collaboration to check it, uh, like make sure that SBRT with radiomics is a very, very less explored options. And uh, we want to learn more about that. Module three, craniospinal adenoic and soft tissues. We are clubbed together. If you see, we have made it in a uh, robust uh, uh, um, course so that like all the areas where you're, uh, wherever you're interested is always uh, touched upon. You can always pick up and see that, okay, I, I want to attend, make sure that we can uh, attend this particular session. So module four, the thoracic, breast, lung, and thyroid is club together with uh, three sessions and 90 minutes each. Module five, epidemiology and colon. Pelvic malignancy is separate we attempt because prostate is another thing where we are, want to concentrate and renal cell tumors where we are looking at immunotherapy and the primary renal cell tumor also SBRT is one of the things what we are looking at uh, and urinary the bladder tumors. Of course, the rectal cancers and uterine cancers are also uh, we want to touch upon. Teaching methodology is live sessions, either pre and also pre recorded or theoretical lectures, is ranging from around 25 to 27 hours, usually on a weekend, that Saturday, Sunday. If the batch agrees, we are ready to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well. So, to uh, make it uh, like so that we can finish it off as early as possible of eight to 10 weeks. Practical sessions ranging from two to five days, including uh, speciality specific split up sessions where experts in the field of like the faculty in that particular field are go going to be there and uh, uh, brainstorm and understand and learn each other. So meet our experts, like it's, uh, I mean, we can start like we have Dr. Ramesh Bilimaga, our mentor, and Dr. Sham Chivasa, and uh, our mentor, uh, and I'm the course director, Manoj Gupta sir, uh, for the radio biology and the mentoring, uh, mentorship, and Anishil Munchi from Delhi. So okay. he's specialized yes, in SPRT, for, especially for the lung. Everybody knows him. Kaushik Bhattacharya from Hyderabad. Epitabiliary will be touching upon. Vedang Murthy. Vedang will be touching on urological malignancies. Kindle from Ahmedabad will also be joining us. and. Pichandi, Pichandi is our physicist. Kiranjan Basu uh, from Mumbai, he will be touching on Edenic. Kundan will be touching upon uh, uh, like uh, radioomics data. Lowell will be uh, uh, taking care of immunoral and the Mitwa genomic, genomics. Anu, you are already met. Anu, Anu will be the course coordinator. Anu, you want to, uh, okay. So why SBRT at our goal, our GHA is very important. If you see all the faculty, so my contribution for this, I don't know if it's almost, uh, we are reaching uh, 5,000 plus cases. If you say, if you see the sites, we might have touched more than 6,000 to 8,000 sites of SBRT or a start like almost around 13 years of experience. And as a overall, if you see 
like including the whole faculty, we've met all, done more than 10,000 sites for the last decade. Experience across all missions, and you come up with, like you can see our numerous publications, and you will have that access to all those things, access to all old cases if it is required, and some training will give us give you the more insight and also uh, confidence to, to check it out, like to uh, take it forward. Hands on training is for two to five days, usually in the end of uh, uh, nine to 10 weeks. We can always fix it in such a way that everybody can uh, shoot again. Summary of uh, theory, we are going to do at least uh, uh, morning times for two hours. We are going to do summarize at the same thing what we have done. Patient selection, simulation, planning, evaluation, and exhibition of various patients and sites will be starting from old things and the footage of the hands-on training. You will be given opportunity to, to contour uh, the uh, areas, contour the organs at risk, contour the, the tumor site, the GTVs, and also to, to be, uh, see the exhibition of the patients and across all the platforms. On respective missions in different locations, if it is required, and like either it's Mumbai or Bangalore or Delhi, we'll be looking for uh, participating in all the locations. Cyberline, Felecta, and variant, variant platforms, even and topotherapy platforms will be uh, experiencing, like we'll be working on these platforms. There will be some of the examinations at the each of each courses. You can take those uh, uh, examination exam exams and to, to go to the next levels. Total duration is for nine to 10 weeks. Uh, it may be, if, if it may be decreased, if you make it three that uh, thrice a week, otherwise it's there, usually is around uh, two sessions, that is a weekend sessions. At the end of the course, like we'll have a certification given by GHA, which is Global Healthcare Academy, and uh, and with the, our expert science, and also, we are looking for in association with the, the Karnataka uh, Rajiv Gandhi University, also, that's in work in progress. Thank you for your patience hearing. And uh, if any questions are there, we are, uh, we are ready to take. And over to uh, you, Anu, and Anu is going to introduce our faculty. And uh, I, uh, I expect I uh, call upon all the faculty members to switch on their uh, video. Yes, Go sir. Thank you, sir, thank you. for uh, thank you, sir, for a detailed explanation uh, about the insight and overview of SBRT course, and also introducing the faculty. Uh, all the faculty, I uh, request you to turn on your video and audio. Professor Ramesh is Billy Maga, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Sridhar Piers, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Anushil Munshi, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Kinjal Jani, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Kundan Shufal, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Lohit Reddy, consultant radiation oncologist. Professor Manoj Kupta, consultant radiation oncologist. Dr. Mitwa Ghosh, head genomics department. Dr. A. Pichandi, chief physicist from HCG Hospitals, Bangalore. Dr. Trinanjan Basu, Consultant Radiation Oncologist, and Dr. Vedang Murthy, Consultant Radiation Oncologist. Request all the faculty to turn on your audio and video, please. Sir, only Dr. Trinanjan Basu, Dr. Kinjal Jani, and Dr. Shyam sir are there, Hi. sir, online. Hi, Anu. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good, good. Sridhar, sir, has done some new look, it looks. Very skinjal. Where is it? Trinanjan, sir, is also online, sir. I saw his name. I think, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm here only. Yeah, yeah. Trinanjan is online, yes. So, Trinanjan, actually, Shyam, there are other people. Good evening, Hi, sir. 
Good evening, sir. So the other faculty will be joining as and when, uh, like, uh, I will already showed up with the faculty. So, Kilinjan, you want to say something because you are already uh, with the faculty for the first SPRT course. Uh, so, congratulations to you and GHA so that we could start the second course. And uh, it was very good, the first edition. We hope second edition, more people join for the practical session. Uh, I remember uh, the even the practical session went very well after last year's COVID, some online session. So uh, the only thing, maybe a bit of more, we can keep practical sessions this time. If uh, no more waves, uh, if no more COVID-related travels and other things occur, which is less likely. So uh, we can have more of uh, in-person meetings because uh, I feel in we have so many meetings now in online meetings, you never know whether at all someone is listening to or not. So in person remains more interactive. Very true. And and after your after your uh, episodes of this uh, not so proper connection and login failure and all I these things, so better to be in person more. But yes, it's, it's difficult. But at least some. It was very good, like we did last time. The valedictorina. There were some refresher training, sort of some small. Uh, lectures and then the valedictory. So we can just have maybe three proper full days this time towards the end after the all each sessions of online. So that is thank what you, we, thank you, uh, that's what I was also looking at is to three to five days, five days. The hands-on training is definitely the one which is going to help more. So instead of nine to 10 weeks to, to postpone, Probably depending on how many people register. Actually, we are not looking for too many people. We are looking for around 15 to 20 people so that the people who are serious, the people who really want to do it. That's what we have seen in the last batch. Excellent. Yes. There are people who are already logged in. And if they are there, Sumana, is it possible for them to, to uh, share their experience? Anybody from our old uh, batch, the first batch? Is it possible, Lano? Um, no, sir. Actually, I think they are on the YouTube view. Uh, in the meeting, they are not there right now. They don't have the access to talk, I think, right now. So, okay. So we can always, uh, yeah, if it is possible, we would have taken their can... feedback. Next session we so can do, so maybe when yeah, we are yeah, we'll do that. So, uh, anybody had any questions, Samana? Uh, no, doctor. Uh, they have uh, mentioned it in the chat box, which uh, I will uh, share it with you after the session. Okay, okay. They can always connect to the faculties and check it out. Sham, sir, you want to tell something yes, like sir. it's about that? I think Shridhar... Uh, you have very nicely elaborated. So I must congratulate you uh, for this wonderful thing. And I think uh, as we discussed just uh, two days back, it is actually needed um, and uh, it has not been really practiced by so many people. And ideally it should be a common practice practically in all centers. So that's a really important thing with uh, what the GHA is doing and your contribution your colleague, uh, you and your colleagues are really working on this. This is really very important. And I see that more and more people will definitely uh, come and do the stereotactic radiation. I mean, it may be with any kind of machine. The one thing which I was thinking that uh, those training course, which you are conducting in full, if you have a kind of recording or those people who have uh, attended earlier, uh, those things can be distributed, maybe a free of cost or maybe on uh, something like a, with a, some cost will be useful to most of the people who are not able to attend because we know that you have been taking around 15 to 20 people, but too many, many other people may be interested in really seeing that. So if that recording is given to them or maybe kind of lectures which is given to them, that will be really helpful for many, many people especially the students. 
and secondly when you are taking this 15 to 20 people it will be really worthwhile that even one or two maybe a older people who have been trained they come here and uh, my purpose what i am thinking is that like we did it earlier that who has been trained should become a trainer over a period of time i mean you have got a lot of experience uh, in steward acting and those people who are attending will also do some kind of practice and they should be a teacher maybe 10 years from now or five years from now so that will be great that they have learned from you and now they are the teacher so that will be a really important thing and you have really said very well that what is there in the training course i was just thinking that if you can add something like a you said about oligometastasis, but also some benign conditions, maybe very specifically. So maybe I think we can include some neurosurgeon also sometime. What are their experience when they refer the cases to you and or to anybody uh, in the SCG group? And uh, what are their experience, how the patients have done? Because the reason which I am telling is basically the follow-up with us may not be so good but they will definitely be having the follow. So maybe that thing can also work. And I was just thinking one thing because uh, just a few days back, I was there in Department of Atomic Energy in a BRC and there are some radiation biologists and really they are very interested in the kind of research. Sometimes we do research, but which is purely clinical, but maybe when we take it as a research on a basic level, maybe one or two radiation biologists from anywhere in the country, if they are also a part of that, may not be just for the lectures or something, but somewhere. So those people who are using it, they also contribute and we will have a very good kind of uh, publications in a coming period of time. So really wonderful. And I really congratulate you for doing a, such a wonderful job. And I'm very, very, very confident that over the period of time, your entire team will we really uh, shine over the time, showing that steward tactic to propagate it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm really very happy with this uh, kind of seminars and the group and the hands-on practice to all the people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have noted down all the inputs you have given. We'll make that necessary changes. Uh, sir, sir Shridhar, sir, you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. That's uh, actually even the neurosurgeons uh, is also a part of the uh, this one. We have included benign, when you say the CNS, we have included all benign tumors as well. Mm -hmm. And some training, in fact, when they, uh, when they come for ransom training, we want to like immunotherapy, medical oncologies, all other specialties, the surgeons, neuro, neurosurgeons, GI surgeons, will also be there for at least for s some of the talks, how they even, uh, like uh, if it is possible, they, we can show some of the surgeries also, depending on the oh. time. They, that is what, like you, like robotic surgeries are there. Yeah. So that is what the plan, sir. And also coming to coming back to radiobiology and the research part of it, sir. SBRT is very niche and very very uh, evolving field. So I am really I my as I shared with you, my dream is that every radiation oncologist should at least do. A SBRT for brain and spine, which is, right. that is what is my dream, sir. The people should not, the palliative RT, what we are looking at that should be converted into SBRT, a short course, a short, very, very, now we have a robust data to say that SBRT is one of the main thing for brain metastasis and bone metastasis. Everybody should do it. And why, why we cannot, we, I, we are ready to propagate that and, even our the old students, old colleagues, I won't call it as a uh, students, they're already in, in uh, uh, we work together and our aim is to, to start SBRT courses across the country so that like SBRT, uh, the programs. So at least one board, like uh, we have a GI team, epidemiology team, epidemiology clinics. So I want that they should, we should start an SBRT clinic. In our, uh, every center, there should be SBRT clinic where there's the cases can be discussed. We have a group, actually, they can always post the uh, cases and take advice and we always free to, to um, uh, help them in those sense, sir. So that's a well, very well taken, sir. I'm, I'm actually in that direction. Uh, we want to move forward in that direction. 
Your great, guidance wonderful. is definitely required. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. Anu? Anu, yeah, yeah. It's your... Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, we have come to an end of the session, sir, with your closing remarks. Sumana, can you please throw the slide of uh, flyer on this, this thing so that all the students can see? Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. So request the participants who are, has attended this meeting to share this slide with your uh, colleagues and students or juniors. So the, uh, Sumana, you can just uh, give a short info about that. Are you going to? So there is uh, 10 to 15 slots or maximum 20 is the one what we are looking at because we don't want to crowd too much, but first come first serve basis. And uh, numbers are there. You can always contact Sumana or even any of the faculty members. We are going to, to help you if you are not able to access the these numbers. And we would like to start as early as possible from 30th and 31st is of July. So uh, this is what we are looking at. And the advantage of uh, the GHA with SBRT, what, what I'm looking at is when you come to an hands-on training, there may be some special, the conferences may be happening. So now there is a SOGO urology conference. We are doing it here. So we are concentrating on the uro-oncology part of it. Some of the people who become the uh, part of uh, the, the participants the SP second batch will also have an access to G the, the Euro SOGO conference, and which is going to be held on uh, 26, 27, 28 of August. So we may like it's, and the hands on training will be after like uh, probably mid of September. So, like that, whenever it is happening, we may have a uh, individual lung cancer. Uh, as a uh, single modality and along with this combination and, and like that we may be doing in a different uh, speciality site specific to add on something Sumana, you want to add on something Yes, doctor. Uh, all the participants uh, who are on platform, uh, so we have received your chats and queries. We will be uh, shortly reverting you back on that. So and if, if, any question, is, uh, Sumana, if any specifically, if they are asking any questions which are common, you would like to uh, for, uh, ask so that on behalf of them, we are ready to do yeah, it. Yeah, they were uh, they were just checking on the hands on doctor. Like, uh, how is the hands on going on? And uh, now, is it only at, in HCG Bangalore? Is what few people have asked. So, so I will be good. like depending on the uh, availability and the word, this one. Yes, we are, we may do it in two places. Mumbai and Bangalore is the definite, and. Uh, uh, we, I always tell, simple example, you have a particular missions. If you collect the cases, we won't mind. The faculty can fly there and start do the hands-on training for you in your hospital. So that possibility is also there. So we are looking at all the options. And uh, yes, in Bangalore and uh, uh, Mumbai, you have an option uh, like accessibility for both uh, CyberKnife and non-CyberKnife platforms, uh, Erecta. Uh, and the variant platforms. Yeah, definitely, Doctor. Uh, they All of them have got the answer for that. Uh, so rest all, I will uh, personally call them up and uh, email so, them. Uh, the, we at an average on a Linux platform, we do around uh, uh, 8 to 10 cases a month in Mumbai. In CyberKnife, we do around uh, 30 to 35 cases uh, or maybe in Bangalore and other places, uh, in in Mumbai we do around fifteen to twenty cases for CyberKnife, and and with the combination of all the faculties, at least we will be doing around uh, uh, fifty to hundred fifty around fifty cases on Linux platform and around uh, uh, 60, 70 cases on the CK platform. Yes, nice doctor. And one uh, one doctor who is registered for our uh, course, uh, the second batch, upcoming batch, is there online. 
if he has any queries he can just uh, or uh, how he wants to go ahead with the course he can share uh, dr john uh, if you can just uh, unmute yourself yeah good evening sir hello am i audible yes you are little bit louder yeah yeah good evening sir good evening hello yes, yes doctor you are audible you can yeah, if possible uh, myself, you can switch uh, on your video also yeah myself dr john joseph i am uh, working as associate professor at regional cancer center to antro hi john okay yes. yeah the uh, one of my one of our colleagues uh, dr nasni attended the last time course uh, she was so excited and uh, uh, was uh, was so uh, 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 she so nasim uh, i remember nasim registered the first the moment if it is we announced uh, dr nasim registered first uh, person and yeah. because of with covid we extended also thank you and welcome welcome for the uh, second batch i'm sure that like you, you will enjoy okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you doctor uh, sir can we uh, conclude the session now or uh, you want to say anything before yeah. we conclude uh, uh sorry for the uh, uh, internet connections like yeah uh, we there was a little bit of interruption but uh, like the coach will definitely be uh, if any doubts or anything definitely please contact us uh, and we are happy to be like we will welcome you all if you have any doubts definitely let let us know even one, although it's a 10 20 people so as dr shrivats dr sham sir uh, told so we want to reach more people and that can be okay. if the numbers are more we may do two batches that's not an issue like we we can uh, do two batches okay yeah, thank definitely. you once again uh, good night from my side thank you thank you doctor. thank you sir and uh, thank you to all uh, global healthcare academy organizers for making this session wonderful Thank we'll you. We'll be looking forward for way more sessions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to all faculty. Good Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Bye. night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See 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 you. See